From the CISO series, it's Cybersecurity Headlines. It's Tuesday, October 6th, 2020. Ransomware disrupts COVID-19 vaccine trials. The attack hit the Philadelphia-based e-research technology on September 20th, which provides services for electronic patient-reported outcomes in clinical trials. Researchers in multiple clinical trials couldn't access electronic patient records, resorting to pen and paper, including work done by IQVIA, a research organization working on AstraZeneca's COVID-19 vaccine trial. The attack didn't ruin any clinical trials, but did slow down data transmission. ERT took its systems offline on September 20th as precaution after the attack struck, with data backups limiting the scope of the outage. The attack was reported to the FBI, although it's unknown what strain of malware was used or what the attackers asked for in ransom. The SEC sues John McAfee over cryptocurrency promotion. The agency is suing McAfee, saying he earned $23.1 million in undisclosed compensation for several cryptocurrency products with claims that were false or misleading. The promotion lasted from November 2017 through February 2018, with McAfee denying that he was paid by the issuers. The SEC is seeking a trial by jury and will attempt to confiscate the promotion compensation with interest, as well as ban McAfee from serving as an officer or director of any company that files reports with the agency. Firmware Bootkit Spotted in the Wild The newly uncovered framework is called Mosaic Regressor and appears to be the work of a Chinese-speaking group targeting groups with ties to North Korea. Researchers initially found altered Eufy firmware images that incorporated malicious modules, which contained a customized version of the leaked source code of hacking team's Vector EDK Bootkit. The end goal of the bootkit would be to install an Intel Update.exe executable into a machine's start menu, which would then run on boot up, triggering the download of several espionage and file extraction payloads. The vector of getting the malicious firmware onto machines is unknown. Flaws found in popular antivirus programs. Researchers at CyberArk found the flaws, which could allow for an elevated privilege attack on targeted systems. Flaws were found in antivirus solutions from Kaspersky, McAfee, Symantec, Fortinet, Checkpoint, Trend Micro, Avira, and Microsoft Defender. One of the main flaws was the use of the program data folder on the system drive to store default DACLs, which can be read or written to by any user and ultimately stage an escalated privilege attack. Other flaws include vulnerability to symlink attacks and DLL hijacking flaws. CyberArk says that it contacted the manufacturers of all the antivirus solutions listed who have addressed all reported issues. And now a word from our sponsor, Detectify. Detectify is where security engineers and developers come to collaborate and build safer web apps using ethical hacker knowledge. Using payload-based testings, Detectify checks for 2,000 plus known vulnerabilities and helps you stay on top of emerging threats. Start a free two-week trial today at Detectify.com. Unpatched vulnerability found in Apple's T2 chip. The findings come from security researcher Niles H., who found that because the T2 chip on recent Intel-based Macs is based on Apple's A10 processor, it's also vulnerable to the Checkmate exploit. This could allow attackers to get around a Mac's activation lock when used in conjunction with the Pangu vulnerability. Getting access to the T2 chip wouldn't decrypt files from Apple's file vault, but it would give full root access and kernel execution privileges. Not great. Apple can't patch the vulnerability as the T2's operating system uses read-only memory, although the vulnerability requires a hardware component and isn't persistent, which limits its potential use. Report finds SMBs investing in cybersecurity during the COVID era. The report comes from Kaspersky and found that 71% of SMBs plan to increase cybersecurity spending during the next three years, with only 70% planning to keep spend unchanged. Kaspersky found that responding to increased IT infrastructure complexity was the main driver of growing cybersecurity spending, followed by a need to improve internal expertise and an overall desire to improve a company's security posture. The budget for IT spend in terms of overall IT budget also increased on the year for SMBs, up from 20% in 2019 to 23% in 2020. The report also found that the average cost of a data breach decreased for SMBs from $108,000 in 2019 to $101,000 in 2020. Alleged leaders of the Team Executor Piracy Group arrested. The Department of Justice announced the arrests of Max Loran and Gary Bowser in conjunction with video game piracy, as well as charging Yuning Chen, a Chinese national. Team Executor claims to have been around since 2001 and sells devices to mitigate copyright protection on consoles for the purpose of running pirated software. Each man faces 11 felony counts. 
According to court documents, the government believes the piracy ring consists of at least a dozen individuals involved in finding the exploits on consoles, operating websites to sell devices to customers, as well as the producers and distributors of the circumvention hardware itself. Most healthcare apps have serious bugs. This comes from Intertrust's security report on global health apps in 2020, looking at 100 healthcare apps across iOS and Android. The report found that all apps surveyed had at least one basic security issue, while 71% contained at least one high-level security flaw. 91% of the apps had weak encryption, with 34% of the Android apps and 28% of iOS apps open to encryption key extraction exploits. Health commerce apps had the most vulnerabilities as a category, while telemedicine apps had the most high-risk vulnerabilities. 60% of Android apps also stored data in the Shared Preferences folder, which is unencrypted. Intertrust found that 80% of high-risk vulnerabilities it found could be mitigated with measures like code obfuscation, tampering detection, and white box cryptography. Today on CISOseries.com, we've got the latest episode of CISO Security Vendor Relationship Podcast, entitled, Whether It's Vulnerabilities or Children, We Like to Pick Favorites, featuring a discussion about the need to take a risk-based approach to remediating vulnerabilities. Find the episode on our site or on your favorite podcast app. I'm Rich Straffolino, reporting for the CISO series. Cybersecurity headlines are available every weekday. Head to CISOseries.com for the full stories behind the headlines. 